Hi everyone and welcome to question one associated with the first Measures of Association lecture. As usual, I recommend you pause the video, attempt the question on your own, and then watch the remainder of the video to see whether you did it correctly. So in this case, a cohort study is performed to investigate the effect of smoking on risk of myocardial infarction. Patients are divided into two groups based on baseline smoking status and followed for 10 years to determine occurrence of myocardial infarction with the results produced to the left. As usual, disease status is along the columns, smoking status or exposure status is along the rows. And we're asked, what is the relative risk, relative risk reduction, and odds ratio of MI comparing smokers and non-smokers? So for the relative risk, we would do the risk among the exposed divided by the risk among the unexposed. And we remember that to calculate risk, we take the total number of people in the group who had the outcome and divide it by the group total. So for the risk of exposed, we would do among smokers, the number who had an MI divided by the total number of smokers. And for non-smokers, we would do the number of non-smokers who had an MI over the total number of non-smokers. This could be simplified to 0 0.25 over 0 0.1 which is equal to 2.5. So we would say smokers have two and a half times the risk, the 10 year risk of MI compared to non-smokers. Moving on to relative risk reduction, we know that this is calculated as one minus the relative risk. So you might be scratching your head here because you're saying we calculated the relative risk to be 2.5. One minus 2.5 is a negative number. So this doesn't really make sense. And I, I really want to put in this example to highlight that it's great to know the formulas and it's great to know how to just plug in the numbers. But at the end of the day, you really need to understand what you're calculating and think, how can I use the information that's provided and manipulate it in order to come to some intelligible conclusion? So in this case, we know that smokers have a higher risk of myocardial infarction, both intuitively and based on the results of this table. So it makes sense that the question we're really asking is, um, among non-smokers, how much is their risk of MI reduced compared to smokers? So it would make sense that in that case, the relative risk would be non-smokers compared to smokers rather than smokers compared to non-smokers as we did over here. So for the relative risk reduction, we would do one minus the reciprocal of what we found. So the risk among non-smokers divided by the risk among smokers this would be equal to one minus 0 0.4, and this would be equal to 0 0.6 or 60%. Meaning that non-smokers had a 60% lower 10-year risk of MI compared to smokers. So again, I really wanted to put in this example to highlight that you always wanna, you know, it's good to be able to know the formulas and know how to kind of plug and chug, but at the same time, you need to be able to be flexible and think how you can manipulate the information that's given to come to some intelligible result and really understand what you're calculating. Lastly, for the odds ratio, we know that this is the odds among the exposed divided by the odds among the unexposed. And in contrast to risk, which uses the group total as the denominator, for the odds, the denominator is the number of people in that group who did not have the outcome. So in this case, the odds of the, uh, among the exposed or the odds among the smokers would be 500 over 1,500. And among the non-smokers would be 1,000 over 9,000. Again, 500 over 1,500 among the smokers and 1,000 over 9,000 among the non-smokers. If we were to simplify this, we would find that this is one-third divided by one ninth, which is equal to 3.0. Meaning that smokers had three times the 10 year odds of MI compared to non-smokers. And as we discussed in lecture, the odds ratio will always be further from one than the risk ratio. So that's a good check because we know 3.0 is farther from one than 2.5. So in conclusion, we would say smokers had two and a half times the risk of MI compared to non-smokers. They also had three times the risk or three times the odds of MI compared to non-smokers. And 
non-smokers had a 60% lower risk of MI compared to smokers. If you had trouble with this question, I recommend re-watching the associated video. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, and good luck.